I'm going to be looking at uh, John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Now, these are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ to his disciples. Let not your heart be troubled. Uh, ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions or many, many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Now, the first of all, first of all, we see the Lord Jesus Christ going to prepare a place for his disciples, for the believers, uh, by going to the cross, by dying on the cross for you and for me, by being crucified for you and for me. And then he was going to prepare a place in heaven, prepare those mansions. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Now, he's talking about the rapture here, the rapture of the church. In other words, the translation of the church. That is the time when the Lord Jesus Christ comes down into the air. That's what we're waiting for now. The believers are waiting for the rapture of the church. The time when the Lord Jesus Christ comes down into the air and snatches us away from this present evil world to be with himself for all of eternity in heaven. I wonder, will you be part of the rapture? Will you be caught up to meet the Lord in the air? And so shall we ever be with the Lord, as it says in First uh, Thessalonians in chapter 4. Or will you be left behind to go through the tribulation period, uh, a time of uh, judgment, a time of um, terrible time of judgment upon this earth, the, la the seven-year period, last three and a half years is called the Great Tribulation. It's really focused upon the uh, the Jews as a nation, predominantly, but it will affect the whole wide world. It will affect the Gentiles as well. So you need to be ready. You know, you need to be ready to meet God. And how can you be ready? By coming in repentance toward God. That is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and God promises you everlasting life. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So the Lord Jesus Christ, he said he was going away to prepare a place for the believers. <clears throat> and, um, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, that's in heaven, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know. In other words, where I go, ye know. And the way, ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither. In other words, we don't know where thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. Now notice his, his words carefully here. He didn't say, I am a way. There are not many ways to heaven. There's only one way to heaven, and that is through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In other words, we can't be in heaven apart from coming Apart from getting to heaven through the Lord Jesus Christ, by believing upon him, by putting our faith wholly and solely upon him. See, it's not by works of righteousness, which we can do, but according to his grace and his mercy, he has saved us. What are you saved as you listen to this message? Now, obviously, some of the people who watch this will be saved but uh, or are saved. But what about you? You need to get saved yourself. You need to come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ yourself as an individual before God. So just repeating those words, a well-known verse, one of the probably one of the most well-known verses in the whole of the word of God, the Bible and the whole of the world. Uh, apart from John 3.16, of course, it's probably the most well-known verse. But this other one here, I Jesus saith unto him, I am the way the truth and the life no man cometh <coughs> excuse me no man cometh unto the father but by me in other words we can't be in heaven 
apart from getting to heaven through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He goes on to say, If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. In other words, Lord, show us the Father, and it will be sufficient for us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works, that is greater in number, greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. <clears throat> if ye love me, keep my commandment. See, a proof that we love the Lord Jesus Christ is the fact that we'll be seeking to keep his commandments. If we don't keep his commandments, it's a proof that we don't really love the Lord. Now, I'm not saying that you're not saved if you don't keep the commandments, but it's a proof that we actually love the Lord when we do keep the commandments of the Lord. If ye love me, keep my commandments. It's not to get to heaven. Not, it's not by works that we're saved. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. So salvation is the gift of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. When we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that's when we receive forgiveness for our sins and we have a home in heaven. This is what God wants for each and every one of us, that we would have a home in heaven by putting our faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Repentance toward God, as I've said. Change your mind. Agree with God that you are a sinner and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and your soul will be saved. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me. Because I live, ye shall live also. You see, through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, when we put our faith in him, Put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We receive forgiveness for our sins and a home in heaven and peace with God. Everlasting life through faith alone in him. So the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead the third day means that you and I can be saved. The work is complete of redemption. He shed his precious blood upon the cross for you and for me, so that you and I could receive forgiveness for our sins. That day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. 
He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. Again, this is another proof that we love the Lord Jesus Christ if we have his commandments and we keep them. And of course, we keep them by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the only way that we can keep the commandments of the Lord. It's by the power of God himself, the power of the Holy Spirit who dwells inside of our bodies once we're saved. Once we become children of God, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within our bodies. And then, and then only, can we actually please God. We can actually do that which is right in the sight of the Lord by the power of the Holy Spirit who dwells inside of our bodies. Yes, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth uh, me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which uh, ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. See, the words that the Lord Jesus Christ spake, he spake from the Father. He was speaking, he was the divine messenger, God's messenger the one who would bring the message from God down from heaven, bring the message down to people on earth through the vessel, our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who died on the cross for you and for me. Now, I'm sure you know this. Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and he was buried and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, which means that if you put your faith in him, your soul will be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He said, He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Um, And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said I go unto the Father. For the Father is greater than I. Now the Father is greater than the Lord Jesus Christ in the sense that the Lord Jesus Christ humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, in the sense that he is the servant of Jehovah, the perfect servant of Jehovah. Only in that sense, uh, the Father is greater than him. But in reality, they are equal. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're all equal in power. And so we need to understand that. Uh, And now I have told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh, he's talking about the devil here, and hath nothing in me. Now what does he mean? The prince of this world is seen as the devil, is mentioned as the devil here. Now, the devil has nothing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what does he mean by that? He means that 
the Lord Jesus Christ does not have the sinful nature. God calls it the flesh. It's the sinful, na- Ooh, excuse me, it's the sinful nature that you and I have inside of our bodies and causes us to sin, do that which is wrong in the sight of the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ does not have that sinful nature. You see, when the Lord Jesus Christ was tempted or tested, if you like, of the devil in the wilderness or in the desert, um, there was nothing in the Lord Jesus Christ to respond to that temptation. But there is something in you and I that can respond to the temptation and it will cause us to sin. If we respond in the wrong way to temptation, it causes us to sin. The temptation itself is not sin in and of itself. It's our wrong reaction to it that causes us to sin. Now, that's the difference. The Lord Jesus Christ was tempted in all points like as we, uh, yet without sin. You'll see that, I think it's in Hebrews, the book of Hebrews it says that. <coughs> I might not have the wording exactly spot on, but it's something to that effect. So the Lord Jesus Christ does not have the sinful nature that you and I have, the sinful nature that uh, is opposed to God. It's something that, that will always be with us. Even as believers, we still have the sinful nature. God has not removed the sinful nature from us. He's left it with us. Now, the reason he's done that is so that you and I, as believers now, I'm talking to believers, we have a choice to make. When temptation comes and we are tempted concerning fleshly things, uh, concerning our flesh, well, then we need to resist the temptation by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, if we don't resist those temptations, it'll cause us to sin against the Lord and do that which is wrong in the sight of the Lord. Now, this is what we need to understand. The temptation, as I've said, is not sin. But our wrong reaction to the temptation, as in yielding to the temptation, that is sin. So this is what we need to understand. But when we become a believer in our Lord Jesus Christ, as I said earlier in the message, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within our bodies. And the Holy Spirit gives us the power to resist that temptation so that we don't fall in that same way and give in to the temptation. That's the difference between a believer and an unbeliever. An unbeliever does not have the power to resist that temptation really totally fully. They might to a certain degree, but, you know, with self-control or whatever you might like to call it, but, but really a believer is the only one who has the power to resist the temptation fully in the presence of the Holy Spirit inside of the believer's body. Now, this is the difference between a believer and an unbeliever. The believer has the Holy Spirit inside of their body. He gives us the power to do that which is right in the sight of the Lord, to obey the Lord, but an unbeliever cannot do that. They don't have that power. This is why another reason we need to be saved. We need to be saved by the grace of God through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. As I've said, repentance toward God, change your mind, agree with God that you are a sinner, and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And now I have told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, you might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ does not have the sinful nature inside of his body, the flesh. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. So the main issue is we need the salvation of God. We need to be saved by the grace of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ putting our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I appreciate that. 
If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a great day.